Hi, welcome to Robin's Mobile Roost. Today I'm going to show you a really fun basket to make. The one we're making today um, uses a Valentine theme, but wouldn't this be awesome for an Easter basket or a May basket? It has these cute little handles and it starts out with a six by six inch base of cardstock. So let me flip the camera and we can start creating. The first thing that you want to do when you start making this little basket project is to choose your patterned paper. And then you're going to choose a coordinating cardstock to go with it. Now in a minute here, I'll put up all the measurements. You're going to want to get everything cut first before you start putting anything together. Now I do have a couple of tips for the um, for the paper, if you choose one that has a, um, a design that goes one direction or the other, you're going to want to be a little bit um, careful with, with how you're going to place them. Most of the pieces won't matter how you cut them, but the little triangles are going to matter. You're going to want your, your longer um, side down, because these are two and an eighth by one and seven eighths. So make your two and an eighth uh, this way. And then you're going to mark, um, mark it in half. So this is gonna be one and a sixteenth. And you're gonna mark that and then cut down to the corner to make your triangle. So you start with a square. Well, not a square, I guess it's a rectangle. <clears throat> and then you're going to cut it into the triangle. So those are my tips for cutting your paper. Okay, I'll put this up and then once you have it all cut, we'll get started making this project. So the tricky part on this, once you have all these little pieces cut, is to get the, um, the six by six base scored and sliced up. So I'm gonna pull in my trimmer and we're gonna start by scoring at two inches. And four inches. So that's all the score lines we're gonna need. Then we're going to turn it 90 degrees so our, our score lines are running this way. <clears throat> and we're going to start doing our our cutting to make our little um, fingers that are going to make our our basket. So we're going to start at five eighths. So you do need a trimmer that has eighths on it. And you're going to take your cutting blade and cut from the edge to the score line, leaving the center between the two score lines uncut. So you're going to cut and it's a little bit hard for me to see where this is when it, I usually put my head right over top of it. And then you're going to pick your trimmer up, right, your blade up. Don't cut in the middle part there. And then when you get to the other score line, you're going to pop your blade back in and cut the rest of the way from the score line to the edge. Then we're going to go to one and a quarter and do that same thing. So from the from the edge to the score line, pick it up so you're not cutting the center from the score line to the edge. And then our last cut is going to be at one and seven eighths. So these are all five eighths inches wide. What we're doing is making three five eight five eighths inch wide little tabbies. Then once we have that done, we're going to flip it completely around. So we're going to put the little tabs on the other side. So again, we're going to start at 5 eighths. And cut from the score line to the outside edge on both sides. One and a quarter. And one and 
and seven eighths. So then we have these, these squares in the middle. Now for this, this is actually going to be two and a quarter inches. Okay, so we're going to pull in a pencil and we want half of it. So we want, we want one and an eighth, right? And we're just going to mark that there. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now you can either um, just use that dot in the corner. What you're going to do, let me just draw a line here so I can show you what you're going to cut. You're going to cut from this corner where the score line and the other cut meet up to your mark that you just made. So we're going to cut these corners off, right? Creating a little triangle. Let me just put this here so you can see it really well. Okay. So that this this is all going to get cut off. Now to do that, I like to fold my um, my pieces out of the way. Now you could take a scissors too if it's easier for you. I'm just going to fold those back so they're out of my way, and then. Line up my paper. And then once I have it on, I want to double check and make sure it's still where, where it was, because sometimes it likes to move on me. And then I'm going to slice that part away. And I typically don't put all these lines on. But if you do the lines, you can easily erase them. And I made these pretty dark. And then we're going to go ahead and do that same thing on the other side. So we're just going to line up the dot and this corner. So now we have our pieces all, all ready. We've got our little fingers and our triangles. So it really wasn't that hard. It, it, it looks more difficult than it really is. Now, here again, when you're, um, when you're hearing these, if you've chosen a pattern that has a direction, this is going to be your bottom, right? So these are going to go here. And you're going to want your, so like this is our base. It's going to be sitting on this. So let's just go ahead and hear these. And I like to use liquid glue. Um, it's always a good idea to pull in your silicone mat to adhere your stuff without getting your um, glue all over your paper. And you want to make sure when you glue down this center piece that you get the corners pretty good. You want the glue like right to the corner because when you bend it, the corners are going to want to um, pull up. Now when you're adhering the little, um, all these little strips, you're going to have to remember that if you have ones that have a direction, these are going to bend this way. So you want all of them, the ones I've chosen here don't have a direction, but you want them all so that, imagine this had a direction to it. They're all going to be going this way. 
So this is up, this is up. Just a tip. Like I said, I've chosen some paper here that doesn't have a direction, which is probably a good idea for your first basket. Now when you're layering your pieces, you can keep them in order or mix them up. Because you're going to be turning them, it really isn't going to um, line up the patterns. And I probably didn't mention this paper that I'm using here is the Sweet Talk Designer Series paper from the um, 2022 January to June Mini Stampin' Up! Catalog. Super fun um, Valentine paper with with lots of different colors in it so you have a lot of choices um, for your base. So once you have all your pieces on there, you know what, let's, um, we have our, our two pieces for our handles, let's get those adhered right away too. Oh, and I forgot to cut this to length, so it's a little bit long. I think they're six inches and it should be five and seven eighths. So we'll just give it a snip on the end. Okay, so now we have all of that adhered. Now to start forming our basket, what we're going to do, let's give these all a good fold here. And this is the tricky part where sometimes it'd be nice to have like four arms or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the two outside pieces in and adhere them together. And it would be nice to do them both at once, but not necessary. So that's what's going to form your, your basket when you pull these pieces in. So we're just going to put a little dab of glue on here and pull this piece in to meet. And you want both sides overlapped about the same, however much you want your basket, um, the curves. Have them straight and then just hold it for a little bit. This is the part that's the, the, the patience part, right? And then you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, pulling it in the same amount so that your, your basket is nice and level and not kitty wampus. And then you're gonna go ahead and keep Keep gluing them in, starting with the top one, and just put a little dab on here. Doesn't take a lot. And then another little dab of glue and do the other side. And I kind of keep it as much, you know, under the, the edge. You can cut those off when you're done, but the less you have to cut off, the easier, right? And then for the top triangle, I kind of like to add a little bit of glue along the edge too, like right here. Yeah, it looks like I got it a little too far out. So 
So you're going to want to hold it for a minute just to get it adhered. And it's going to look like that when you're done. So you can see how those all layer. And this is where if you have um, paper that goes a certain direction, you know you might want it to all go the up direction. But I have um, I have done it and with that, that type of paper and done it not paying attention to the direction. And it actually didn't look too bad either because it's kind of small pieces that you see. So then we're going to start and do the same thing on the other side. Doing our little dot of glue and then putting our, our flaps on. So now we have, um, let's just close up this. That is the base of the um, basket all done. We'll just trim off these, these extra tips that are sticking out here. And they are a little bit um, thick. Let's kind of level them off with the edge of the um, basket. And then we have our little circles that we die cut, or you could punch them too. And I'm just going to bring back in my my cutter here for a minute and I'm going to score the circles in half just to make it easier to fold them and I'm not doing this um, by any measurements I'm just kind of centering it on there and then scoring it just so that it's easier to bend it over the edge of the um, basket oh and my fingers are a little bit sticky from the glue Always remember to use the scoring blade, not the cutting one. So then we're just going to fold those add some glue and this is going to kind of cover up this you know not really pretty tip where all the pieces come together and you're going to want to hold that And it's not a very flat spot to glue together, so it's um, it's hard to get it perfectly straight. So you have so many layers there. It's a kind of a big wad. Now to adhere our handles, I'm using some um, round and square brads, and I'm using the square ones. I'm going to use the white ones on this particular basket. So I need one for each end, so I need four of them. Now I like to take, um, it's a little bit hard to show you because I'll put this on the edge of my table and take my, take your pick tool and like halfway in between the the edge and the and the circle dot and just a little ways down I don't know I'm not very good at measurements so you see about that far you know about so much and then I will make a hole in this to put my brad through kind of wherever you decide to put it do it kind of in about the same spot on all four sides Like I said, I will usually put this against my table edge, but it's hard to show you against the table edge. But you want to make a hole so that you can get your brad through there. Then you're going to make matching holes on your handle pieces on both ends. Like I said, wherever you put them, you know, center them and however high up, try to do them all the same on all 
on all four edges. Then I like to put this through first. And again, if your paper um, has a direction, you might want it to both go from the same side. This paper really doesn't have a direction. So then you're going to want to push the brads through your side of your basket. Sometimes they go through nice and easy and sometimes they don't. Just to warn you, it can be a little bit of a struggle. I usually have at least one brad that likes to bend on me before I get it in there. Now when I first saw this, um, this cute little basket in a magazine, um, it was one that I picked up at a garage sale in a free box, paper crafting I think, I, uh, I immediately thought May basket. I, I love making May baskets. Um, super fun for like tray papers for nursing homes or for neighbors. Did you ever um, ring the doorbell and run, you know, when you put a May basket out? But since it is Valentine's Day, I decided to make some Valentine baskets. And I also did um, an Easter one, or what I think of as an Easter one with some um, of the celebration paper that is um, daffodil. I can never remember the names of them, but, it, but it's a daffodil one. Isn't that pretty for Easter basket? So I hope you have fun making some baskets and giving them, giving them to some friends and family. If you have any questions, just let me know. And I hope you have a great day. Hop on over to my... Um, my store if you need to pick up any of these supplies and if you're watching this um, during the celebration which ends February 28th remember that uh, there's some fun paper and stamps that you can get for free with with the purchase so hope you have a great day and make some fun baskets <music>